are still on the route of the Mekong River, and the destination of the trip is approaching. This is Donglae Sa, the largest freshwater lake in Southeast Asia, which is abundant with aquatic animals and fish that migrate with rapid tides from upstream of Si Pandan, flowing to the Donglae Sa River through Phnom Penh. It's the river that is as important as breathing for the land where Khmer civilization originated and still exists on this river basin today. Donglae Sap used to be rich and abundant, but has recently been showing signs of changes. Fluctuating water levels, decreasing number of fish, a drought that is worsening every year. These are irregular results from human actions and the strangeness of nature, which could cause the abundance of the Donglae Sap to become only a picture of the past. Spirit of Asia is traveling to experience the breath of the Cambodian people and the effect from the situation of the Mekong River and to explore the connection between humans and water. How is Don Le Sap today? Let's find out together. The Breath of Don Le Sap. Where there is an abundance of nature, the area will be the most desirable place to settle down for all living things. Just like the central region of Cambodia, where people densely cluster around a lake that is one of the largest wetland areas in the world called Don Le Sap. The body of water that many living things are reliant on covers an area of 7,500 square kilometers and five provinces of Cambodia, Siam Reap, Pratibong, Bodhisat, Gampong Chanang, and Gampong Tong. In the Khmer language, Donle means river, while Sap means fresh and not salty. This enormous basin is a great ecological system that nature has created for the Mekong River. Because if there is no Donle Sap that preserves water during the dry season, the water in the Mekong River would have been lower than it is and may not even be sufficient to flow to destinations downstream. Likewise, during the wet season, the Donle Sap would function as a reservoir to prevent people along the Mekong River from flooding. We travel to the heart of Don Le Sap by the only means possible, which is by boat. The journey starts from Kampong Prok village in Siam Ria, and after a while, we reach the entrance of a massive lake. The topography of the area is covered with dense Luna Nuts forest and interspersed with basins underwater, making this area become one of the most abundant fishing areas in Donle Sap.
The villagers tell us that in the recent past they were able to catch as much as half a ton of fish per day. Every time when going out to the lake, their boats were full of snakehead fish and giant snakehead fish that weighed about 10 kilograms each. Unfortunately, it has already become the past because the fluctuation of the water decreased the number of fish, especially over the past four to five years when water from the Merkong River came to fill the Donle Sap one to two months too late. ครับผมก็บอกว่าการหาปลาอยู่นี้นะครับเพราะว่ายุคสมัยก่อนปลามีตัวใหญ่ตัวเล็กปัญหาง่ายมากหาง่ายนะครับแต่สําหรับปัจ
Dongling Sa people have invented many ways of fishing that amaze us, but the situation this year seems to be worsening, and the Dongling Sa inhabitants cannot make a living solely by fishing anymore. Sing Li, our boat driver, tells us that the imbalance of natural resource, as well as soaring fuel prices, can go as high as 32,000 riyal per boat, making him unable to afford to go fishing. He has tried many different jobs and ended up as a tourist boat driver because he earns good money and the work is stable. He can also make substantial tips from this job. ໃສ່ຊົວວິກຣັນຈຶ່ງຕຶນນິສາໄຕຍຶງມານກໍາໄຮຕິ້ງຕິ້ງແມ່ນເປັນຍຶງມານປະຈໍາໄງອຸດ
our team arrives at the house of a woman named Salnar, who is the owner of a crocodile farm. Salnar tells us that she and her husband started raising crocodiles eight years ago because they needed extra income to supplement their fisheries. Initially, they bought hatchlings from farms which cost five U.S. dollars each and raised them for meat, which was then sold to restaurants that served exotic dishes. The crocodile skins were then bleached and sold to bag-making shops, which made a healthy income. Finally, she was able to expand her business to include the breeding and raising of crocodiles. ແລະໄດ້ມີຄລີນາຕະເລຈາກາໂຣຕໄຕຈະເປັນປີໄປຄາຫນັງອາດຈົ່ງກຸສາມາມາຊນາແມ່ອັດເດບ້ານ <laughs> ອັດມີໄຕມີໃດແຕ່ຈັ່ງໃດອີ່ຊີກໍບໍ່ບາບາສອບບາກຮູ້ບາຝາງປໍ <laughs> 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 Apart from raising crocodile, Sal Nair also has other extra income, which is planting homegrown vegetables at the rear of the crocodile farm. She says that her garden doesn't need either farmyard manure or chemical fertilizer because the soil is full of sediments that are transported by the Mekong River. All she needs is to connect water pipes from the Donle Sap in order to water her vegetable garden with a sprinkler system. <laughs> ລະເວນະປະຕັກເວນະລະຈະນີ້ບານຕຶກທໍາແມ່ນແຕ່ນ <laughs> 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 From Salnair's house, we pinpoint our last destination in Don Le Sap at the Prektrong Bird Sanctuary. Not long after continuing our boat ride along a mangrove forest, we can see flocks of birds flying around along the shores. This 210 square kilometer area is a large home of local kingfishers. Every year in January, there will be more than 100 species of birds migrating here to find fish and build nests in the trees in this forest. Prektrong Forest has a unique ecological system with more than 200 species of florists. Many of them are endemic plants. The most unique tree, both in terms of appearance and its properties, is known locally as the Rang, or Barringtonia acutangular, which can grow up to 20 meters high. 
Donai, a government officer at the Ministry of Environment of Cambodia, tells us that ring trees can grow in flooded areas for more than nine months. Besides being the main plant species in the flooded forest, this tree also acts as a nursery where exotic species of birds can build their nests. Ring trees also serve as a natural fortress against the winds and tides that can erode surface soil along the coast. But the most worrisome issue is that ring trees and forests are also being threatened by the expansion of arable areas and other human activities. They also have to face bushfires which are caused by droughts and increasing high temperatures due to global warming. เออជួបបញ្ហាប្រឈមទីមួយវាប្រែប្រួលអាកាសធាតុនៅក្តៅដំបន់ដែលយើងធ្លាប់មានសើមវាទៅយើងក្តៅហើយដំបន់មានភ